Hey guys, it's Lemony the Prove It Guy, and this video is going to be 10 tips on sleeping. So tip number one is that sleep repairs your body. So whenever you're sleeping, your body is repairing cells that have been damaged. And the way Matthew Walker put it is that every time you're awake, for the length of time you're awake, you're actually dying. So sleep stops that process and actually helps you recover. So I know it's a bit deep and in there, but sleep actually helps you recover and will improve every aspect of your body. Number two is that you will feel well rested. So again, that's just a saying that we hear a lot, but we don't take it on board. The example I use for people is that I guarantee you've never met a person that has had lack of sleep or a parent that has been kept up by their child for even a day that's in good humor, that's just loving life. So being well rested will make you feel rested. So you're able to do a lot more throughout the day because your focus is there and your concentration is going to be there. Whenever you're well rested, you're not cranky or thinking about your next nap or thinking about when you can actually get to go to bed or even thinking about whatever it is that has kept you up. So whenever you choose to stay up and there's no external reason, you're actually doing yourself more damage than good. So even as an entrepreneur in the past, I would have stayed up and worked for three to four hours at night and then only got about three or four hours sleep and then went on and I thought I would consider myself a macho sleeper. I thought I was fine and could keep going. But as I looked into sleep and I read about it more and just checked in some of the studies, I discovered that I was actually doing more harm to myself than I realized. And then when I aimed for seven to nine hours sleep, I get a lot more done. Not only do I get a lot more done, but it's more productive work. And to me, I'd be, I feel like I'm working at a higher level. So number three is to reset your day. So going to bed gives you an opportunity to reset the day. So if your day has been amazing and you just focus on that, then you might go into tomorrow not working as hard because you had such a great day today. As well as that, if your day hasn't been amazing and it's actually been a bit crap, if you dwell on that, then you can take that into the next day and you're starting the next day slower and in a more negative mind frame. So this way it gets you a chance to reset your day. So sleeping in a regular pattern is going to be more beneficial for you in general, but also just for you mentally to be able to say, this day is terrible, but at 12 o'clock I know it ends, I go to sleep and I move on. Number four is you will create better habits. So going to bed at a specific time at night is a brilliant way to end your day with a habit, something that's beneficial for you. So no matter how your day has went, whether it's been amazing or whether it's been crap, at 12 o'clock or 10 o'clock or whatever time you go to bed at, you know that that is your goal and that is a habit. So every day you get to achieve at least one goal repeatedly. And the more you do that, the more that those habits will creep into your everyday life. You start to realize you can wake up at a specific time in the morning. You can have a healthy meal during the day. You can go for some exercise, go for a walk. So doing one thing that turns into a habit is an easy way to start creating more and more habits throughout the rest of your day. Number five is to keep your room clean. Whenever you have a clutter-free room, you have a clutter-free mind. So whenever you're going into your bed and you're not having to step over things or move things off your bed or actually make your bed before you can get into it, you're able to set yourself up straight away that once you go into your room, your room is for sleeping and you just can go get into your bed and go to sleep. Cleaning the room, again, creates another habit that's beneficial for you, but it just declutters everything so there's nothing distracting you. There's no bags moving and making noise whenever the room's heated up or cooling down. The curtains are, are closed and tidy looking. When you have a tidy room, like try it out with your children, keep the room tidy and they will become less active when they go to bed because there's no stimuli around the bed. And we are the same whenever it comes to sleep. And I think that when we go to bed, we start to think of a million things we could have done or we should have done. And if there's things around the room that we can see, then that's only going to stimulate you more. So tidy your room. So number six is to keep your room cool. So the cooler your room is, the easier it is for you to sleep. So your body temperature lowers and your body's preparing itself for sleep. So from years and years of evolution, that's how we used to sleep in the cold. So it's something that our body is designed to do. So if you start wrapping yourself up in big blankets or wearing loads of clothes in bed or keeping the heat on, you're actually hindering your ability to sleep. 
So there's bound to be a time where you remember where you're rolling about and the room's roasting hot and you just can't get to sleep and you're thinking to yourself, I don't know why I can't get to sleep because we sort of take warmth with being cozy but there's a difference between being cozy and being too warm same as there's a difference between being cool and actually freezing so keep your room cool not freezing and i guarantee it will help you sleep better number seven is to keep your room nice and dark so one of the problems with our society is that we have unnatural light whenever we want it so 24 7 we can have lights on so there's lights outside in cars and in houses from tvs from the phone that you're looking at now from the computer you're looking at there's light everywhere and what that sort of does is stops your body's natural release of chemicals so the melatonin isn't released because it hasn't been triggered properly because there's unnatural light so it's basically your mum chemical so it's the chemical that tells you it's time to go to sleep and because the, the melatonin peaks and then dips, it's why people go through phases where they feel really tired and then all of a sudden they've got a second wind and they're perking back up again. So a lot of people attribute that to caffeine or something like that. But whenever you perk back up again, you're, you're actually tricking yourself into thinking you're fully alert and fully awake and then it drops back down and that, that'll keep happening so you get a bigger drop until eventually you go to sleep. So try to make sure your room's nice and dark. And if you can, unwind from a phone or a TV screen before that. So maybe read in a low light so that you're starting to let that chemical be released. So by the time you get to go to bed, your body's ready as well as your mind. Number eight is to avoid caffeine and alcohol. So I talked about that in the last point a little bit. But caffeine and alcohol are, if we take alcohol first of all, a lot of people tell me that they drink a little bit because it helps them sleep, but alcohol is a sedative. So it doesn't help you sleep, it knocks you out. When you're knocked out, you're not sleeping. You're not going through your REM sleep, your rapid eye movement sleep. You're actually just, well, unconscious. So, so you're, it inhibits your dreams so that you're not repairing as well as you could be because you're not actually sleeping, you've been sedated. And then caffeine has the opposite effect. Caffeine stays in the system. Uh, it makes your system work harder, makes you more alert. And then over time, people become addicted, addicted to caffeine because they think they need it to do certain things. But what's happening is you're having caffeine crashes in the morning, but also it's combined with the fact that you haven't slept properly through the night. The caffeine has affected your sleep, which means that you don't get a proper REM cycle, which is 90 minutes of sleep whenever you go through each cycle. So you wake up feeling sluggish and then you feel you need coffee to go through your day. So as a wee test, you could try it for a week, go to bed at a reasonable time, get up at the same time every morning and try not having any coffee for a week and see when that caffeine's completely out of your system, see what happens. And if you think alcohol helps you sleep, then look into it, you're wrong, it's actually sedating you. Tip number nine is to not stay in bed when you're awake. So obviously you have to stay in bed a little bit when you're awake because it may take you five, 10 minutes to fall over. But if you start to go beyond that, you should probably do something else. So maybe get up out of bed and sit in a chair and read a book or go for a wee walk around your house and have a glass of water because you don't want to get used to being awake in your bed because it creates different habits and different triggers so that it makes it harder to go to sleep as you, as you progress. So whenever you get up and do something different. You're changing the mindset of, I can't sleep and tossing and turning. You're doing something else, so it's giving your body a chance to relax from that. And then maybe that will kick in your, your want to sleep again. So instead of tossing and turning for hours, get up, move around, go and sit somewhere else, read a book. Do something that distracts you from the fact that you can't sleep. Don't do anything too stimulating, like don't go for a run or a workout or anything like that. Just do something that's different from what you have been doing whilst you were trying to sleep. And that should help you get to sleep faster. Number 10 is to write your thoughts down. So I actually keep a wee journal beside my bed and I fill it in with any ideas that I have about stuff that I would like to do, about videos I wanna make or some places that I want to go to. And I also, if I have a dream or a thought about something that's limiting me throughout the day, so something that's holding me back that's been negative and distracting, I will write that down so I can say to myself, right, it's there, I'll not forget it, I'll look at that in the morning, 
and I can deal with it. But for now, I don't actually need to be thinking about that because I'm in my bed and there's nothing I can do about it. When I get into that habit, I notice that that really helped me get to sleep faster. It gets to the point where you don't really need to do it as much. Like I don't have to write everything down. I just like to. But I can just say to myself, I don't need to worry about that because I can't do anything about it. So I will deal with it in the morning. So I'm teaching myself to speak to myself rationally so that I'm not tossing and turning and thinking about something that happened at work or something I said to someone or something that the kids said or anything like that. You're just clearing your mind out so that you can go to sleep, but you're not saying that it's not important. You're actually writing it down. You're saying to yourself it is important, but you can deal with it when you're fresher and at a better mindset to do so. So those are my 10 tips on sleeping, why I think you should sleep regularly, and a few tips to help you get to sleep. If you have any other questions, please feel free to ask. If you would like to see my last 10 tip video, it'll be here. And if you would like to subscribe, I would love that, so please hit that button up there. Thank you very much and have an amazing day, whatever you get up to.